With Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement uh, in front of us, uh, I want to give you some information, a biblical uh, background of this feast, the Feast of um, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur or Yom Kippurim. Um, some say, uh, why bother? These are Jewish feasts. Uh, Leviticus uh, 23 verse 2 says that, that God declares there, these are my feasts, my appointed times. Um, so they're not Jewish, they are gods. And so he, he gives them to all of us to, um, uh, as appointed times, as Moadim. So um, it's good to think about these things. What do they mean? What do they point to? And um, it's uh, only unfortunate that in Christianity in general, um, this has been lost. Uh, it's, of course, the Jewish religion that still observes all these feasts, but that does not make them Jewish. Um, we should actually also um, uh, remember them and uh, understand their meaning. It's early Christianity that got rid of all these things and it, yeah, created even new feasts and on different dates. Uh, and somehow we, are, we, we remain stuck with that, but uh, that's not biblical. In any case, I will um, insert here a video that uh, I did in previous years about Yom Kippur. There is so much information already on this channel and yeah, it's senseless to repeat the same things. Uh, so I will just play this video, but I insert it in here so you can just continue to watch unless you want to watch the Dutch version. I leave the link for that in the description. Uh, God bless and thanks for watching. Hello everyone, a few days from now we will have the feast of Yom Kippur and for the Jewish people this is the most important, the most holy day in the year. For Christians however it's um, mostly neglected and that is uh, peculiar to say the least. Um, for Christians most important feast uh, if you will is most likely Passover. And that's interesting because these two feasts, uh, Yom Kippur and Passover, are very much linked. And um, obviously both, um, well maybe not obviously for the, the latter one, but both of these feasts are um, have everything to do with Yeshua. So for Passover, of course, this is no question, but for Yom Kippur, this uh, applies just as well. It's often said that the seven, uh, from the seven feasts that are given in Leviticus 23, that the first four, the so-called spring feasts, have been fulfilled by uh, Jesus, Yeshua, and that the fall feasts yet have to be fulfilled. Um, however, in reality, uh, all of these feasts have been fulfilled, and some more than once uh, throughout uh, history, and even throughout the life of Jesus. Um, we see a cyclical um, fulfillment or a compound fulfillment. Um, of course, we know that uh, Jesus' passion, his death and resurrection, uh, happened on the first three feasts, uh, the Passover or Pesach, uh, then uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, um, uh, Hag Hamatza, and uh, he resurrected on first fruits, uh, Yom Habikurim. And then, um, of course, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Feast of Shavuot or Pentecost. And so then we have the summer, and after the summer, we, uh, the first feast we have is Yom Teruah, also known uh, as Rosh Hashanah, but Yom Teruah would be the proper name. And um, ten days from the beginning of uh, this Yom Teruah um, is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So if we read in Leviticus 16 about uh, this feast, um, we see that the high priest um, has two goats and uh, a lot is thrown over one, which one is to be the scapegoat and which one um, will be the sacrificial uh, goat to, uh, to pay for the sins. And um, if we then look at uh, 
Jesus' uh, passion and uh, the days leading up to it, we see actually a similar thing. We see that um, uh, at some point before Pilate there is Jesus, Yeshua, and there is Barabbas. And uh, these represent the two goats, if you will, that um, we see in the Day of Atonement. And uh, it is made more clear if you look at their names. Okay, we know of course uh, Yeshua, or in, uh, in Greek, as it is presented to us in Greek, uh, from the Holy Scripture is uh, Jesus, uh, or Jesus in English. Um, but Barabbas' first name was also Jesus. Um, it is um, not in all um, uh, translations this is given, but in the original uh, text, in, in some of the original documents, it is uh, given that his first name was also Jesus. So that makes it very interesting because Barabbas, um, his, his last name means, Bar means son, Abbas is uh, from Abba, from the father. So it is Jesus, son of the father. Um, whereas Yeshua is also Jesus, son of the Heavenly Father. So their equality in name shows that these are the two, two same gods that are presented to the people. And the um, choice has to be made which one is the scapegoat that goes away with the sins uh, and, and brings the sins away. And which one is the uh, sacrificial one who, who will uh, pay for the sins, for the redemption of the sins. And of course, we see eventually that Jesus fulfills both roles because he is both, he carries the, the, our sins, so he's the scapegoat, but he also um, was the sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb. Um, with his blood, he paid for the redemption of our sins. So, uh, in that, um, we see that uh, he did not only fulfill Pesach on that day, but also uh, Yom Kippur. Now, on Yom Kippur, the high priest would bring the blood uh, from the altar of burnt offering um, into the Holy of Holies. And in case you wonder why I have these, uh, these things here in front of me, uh, this is uh, the altar of burnt offering. Um, and uh, this is, then, of course, the Ark of the Covenant. And they are in the proper scale. So you get an idea of the size uh, in relation to each other. So the blood of the sacrifice from the altar of burnt offering would be brought into the Holy of Holiest um, and would be sprinkled on the east side of the mercy seat uh, for the redemption of the sins. Well, we won't go in all the technicalities of why and all this. We've done this in other messages. But um, that is what happens. So the altar of burnt offering is where the sacrifice is happens where the animal is killed and, and the blood is, is caught in pants and um, so this is the sacrifice this represents the cross so the cross we have here that is what this represents and of course the holy of holies is, is the the heavenly uh, it is where jesus now sits at the right hand of the father and um, there he um, he is interceding and um, uh, he has redeemed our sins. Now, the, uh, there is a link between these two. And uh, in our study of the um, Ark of the or the Tabernacle, we, we covered this. Um, but uh, I will turn this around because I left one side open, so you can see actually the inside of the altar of burnt offering. It was uh, basically four uh, walls, um, wood uh, surrounded by uh, um, brass um, no uh, there was no uh, bottom in it it was standing on the ground because that was where the fire was made uh, but there was a, a grate and this can all be found in uh, in exodus uh, describing great detail there was this grate inside on which the the sacrificial animal would be put um, and so the fire obviously is underneath underneath now this grate is uh, also described um, in Exodus, it's at a specific height. And the height uh, is exactly the same, and I will show it with this uh, ruler, it's exactly the same as the height of the mercy seat. So there is a link between these two. The blood from the 
sacrifice here is to be sprinkled on the mercy seat or there. And if you see the layout of the tabernacle, then the altar of burnt offering is the very first uh, object that one would meet uh, upon entering the uh, holy place, whereas the uh, Ark of the Covenant is the very last uh, item that is to be found. Um, and not only that, uh, if you count the items, uh, so we have of course the altar of burnt offering, then we have the laver, uh, the was basin, where the priest would wash his hands and feet, and then uh, inside, uh, beyond the first veil, is um, the menorah, the table of shewbread, and the altar of incense, and beyond the second veil is the um, Ark of the Covenant. Uh, so, uh, if this is the first, this is the sixth item. And it's interesting because Passover, where the sacrifice, uh, where Jesus made a sacrifice, is the first feast, and Yom Kippur is the sixth of the seven feasts. So it's perfectly uh, in line. Jesus fulfilled the role of both of the, the goats or lambs. Um, moreover, the blood is brought on the mercy seat. The mercy seat is the place uh, of um, uh, atonement. And in, uh, in the New Testament, uh, in 1 John, it says uh, that uh, Jesus is the propitiation of our sins. And the word there, propitiation, in the original Greek is ilasterion. And it's the exact same word in Greek that would be used for the mercy seat. So it is basically saying he, he is our propitiation, he is, uh, he is our atonement, but he is, in that he is the mercy seat. So we see that all the different properties throughout this whole process of redemption are all fulfilled by Jesus. All of them. Um, because he is also our high priest, uh, as it is written in the book of Hebrews. So he is also that. He is also the one who brings the blood in. He is the one who presented himself before the Father as the first fruits of the resurrection. And after that the work was done, it was complete. Um, but you would might say, but there are seven feasts, there is an, an, one more after Yom Kippur. Uh, on, uh, Yom Kippur is on the 10th of uh, Tishri and on the 15th of the seventh month is then uh, Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. And, and this again is perfect in line. After all the work is completed, Jesus can dwell with us. He did it the first time in his first advent, and it will be so the second time. Um, and, and that is what uh, Yom Kippur points to, because that's what follows after Yom Kippur, follows Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles. And of course, the, the Ark of the Covenant and all the items are inside the tabernacle. And so again, the picture is perfect. Um, Yom Kippur points to the second coming not to the rapture, uh, to the second coming. It is at the end of the seven days in between Yom Teruah and, um, and Yom Kippur. And so this points to the end of the seven year tribulation. So it's a very interesting feast and it's actually um, just as important as Pesach as these two are linked and one cannot be without the other. It's one complete work where we see that everything in it has been fulfilled by Jesus Yeshua our Lord and Savior. I hope this was informative and um, if you haven't considered uh, thinking about uh, the meaning of Yom Kippur before maybe uh, now it, uh, it will help you to, to see it in a more complete light. I would say uh, read Leviticus uh, 23 where the seven feasts are given and Leviticus um, 16 specifically uh, describes all the uh, procedures during Yom Kippur and um, I would also recommend our study of the tabernacle uh, eight series uh, videos uh, they are short around 15 minutes each um, and gives you a very good insight in, um, in the whole plan of redemption of God. Thank you for watching.